I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my new location for the videos for the foreseeable future. As you probably know, here in Southern Europe, we have been undergoing the most extreme temperatures. In the 19 years I have lived on the Maltese Islands, I have never experienced temperatures like we have in the last 10 days. And I have to say at the weekend, it did make me quite unwell. Um, so I've moved my studio into this second bedroom, this, this guest room, and um, it will be a bit difficult if guests came to stay at the moment because there's no room. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I hope you like it. It's kind of a, a work in progress and the lighting may not be absolutely spot on yet. And you may get, as you probably are, some ring light um, shadows on my glasses. I'm sorry about that. At some point I will get someone in to help me, but it's too hot for any of us to go anywhere at the moment. And so I'm happy here. I have excellent air conditioning in this room. I have got a fan on as well. But let me tell you, the um, temperatures in Malta this week, in right in the centre near Slima, in a place called Xera, um, topped 51. That is deathly hot. And this weather is extremely serious and a lot of us will have been suffering from dehydration and heat exhaustion, but enough about that. I know you want to know all about the full moon in Aquarius and how it's going to affect all your individual zodiac signs. Please remember to like and subscribe and share and all those wonderful things. New subscribers and new visitors to the site, I do hope you like my style of astrology. I hope you like my style of humour. Um, it can be a bit off the wall sometimes, but um, there we go, that's me. I am just being my authentic self. So let's have a look at this full moon in Aquarius. And at this point, hopefully, above my shoulder here, the chart will appear, appear can't speak, will appear. And that will stay there until I look at it again and say it's disappearing. But this is the full moon in Aquarius. Now, I'm using universal time because it kind of, I just feel it is almost like the true time, the actual kind of time of this particular event. Now the full moon actually happens on the 1st of August. I'm doing a live special about the full moon on the 31st of July, that's on Monday night because on the 1st of August, I want to do my live stream about the month of August, because there's a lot to say. So uh, there's a lot to say about this full moon, and there's a lot to say about August. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to say, are you fully awake? Are you paying attention? Because this month and this moon, this full moon in Aquarius heralds in um, a month where we have two full moons because on the 31st of August, we have the full moon in Pisces and this is known as a blue moon. So uh, it's a busy month with the lunar calendar. So let's just see what's happening and this video is a little bit late but i know you'll understand because the heat and everything it's just been impossible to to do anything but the full moon is at nine degrees of aquarius so consequently it's opposite the sun at nine degrees of leo it's nine degrees and 15 minutes actually now let's think about the signs first because leo is a fire sign and fixed, as is Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign and fixed. So we've got fire, 
We've got air, which is about thought. Fire can be about passion, about, uh, you know, if you think of the sign of Leo, it's about performance, entertainment. Aquarius can be about the community at large. So there's, and there's also, remember, this technological side to the sign of Aquarius. So how does this energy play out? Because the sun and the moon are actually also in a T-square. So with Jupiter in Taurus, my big boy, my really big boy, Jupiter in Taurus. And if you look in the chart in the third house, you'll see Jupiter down there just near the IC. And the moon is in the 12th house in Aquarius and the sun is in the sixth house. A T-square, Jupiter. Jupiter in Taurus, it's fixed as well. It's Earth. So we've got Earth, fire and air. Uh, where is the water? Well, there's not much. And you know, it's interesting that um, we're having all these devastating fires in Southern Europe, which has sadly meant that some people have actually lost their lives. And there's something about this time of year because August the 1st, when the full moon actually is, is also the pagan festival of Lammas. And what they used to do, because it marked a midpoint between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. And so what they did in pagan times was light huge bonfires everywhere. Well, we've certainly had plenty of those. We've had a few fires on Gozo, but nothing like has been endured in Sicily, in parts of Italy, in lots of areas of Greece, Rhodes, Corfu, etc. So it is interesting that that fire energy is very key in this lunation. And if you think of Jupiter making this T-square, it's like there's nowhere to go. It's fixed. The full moon, the air of the full moon is fanning the flames. Fanning the flames of something you need to let go of in your life. What could that be? What is it? Is it a relationship that's gone past the time when it really needs to to be let go of habits personal behaviors do they need to be let go of maybe it's a project that you've been working on that really isn't kind of gelling anymore that just doesn't feel doesn't feel the energy doesn't feel like it's where you are at the moment that could also be something that you have to let go of. So remember, full moons are about fruition, completion, endings, but they also herald new beginnings. So they are um, very positive in many ways. But the thing is, when we have to let go of something, when we have to say goodbye to something, the process of loss can be very painful. And this T-square with Jupiter expanding our feelings. You know, Jupiter in Taurus can be about our values, our ways of feeling about ourself. So there's something about really evaluating where we are at this point, where do we need to get to? Where do we need to move forward to? And what do we need to let go of to do that? Let me just have a look at some of the other transits. And we have um, my big small boy, Pluto, our dwarf planet, retrograde in Capricorn and 
Pluto is actually forming a trine, which is a helpful aspect. And you'll see Pluto is, is up there, not far away from the moon in Aquarius, but they're not, they're not conjunct. Um, you could say widely, but they're really not. And they're out of sign as well. Well, Pluto is making a trine to our planet of passion, Uranus. Our planet of, I was thinking about Mars, it's not Mars. My eyes went down to the line below because Mars in Virgo is trining Jupiter. It's the heat, please forgive me. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is making a trine to Uranus. Well, there we go, Uranus just acted out perfectly for me there. Surprises, the unexpected, me basically getting it all wrong <laughs> and describing him as something he's not because he is not a particularly passionate planet. Although maybe that is one of the surprising twists and turns that can come with this. So Uranus in Taurus that actually goes retrograde towards the end of August is making this trine to Pluto. So there is this energy of the urge, the push towards change, towards in many ways quite dramatic change. We can see that in the world. I don't even have to go into the various kind of world politics as they unfold because we know it needs to change because the, you know, I've talked about this before, Pluto in Capricorn is really trying to uh, address the fact that the old ways of management, of government, of tradition do not serve the planet anymore in the, way, in the right way. So, what might you be fanning the flames of that really needs to burn out? Are you burnt out? is the energy of the embers of the fire you've been stoking so with such nurture with such care is that really just a pile of ashes because we need to think about what we've been working on and what we need to move on from because sometimes we hold on to things that we think are good for us and yet somewhere in the back of our minds we know they're not really serving us well now what have you been doing in your life that you're now just kind of going through the motions of it could be a relationship it can be work could be a project, there could be lots of things that used to bring you such excitement and joy. Because you see, I think Jupiter in Taurus is making you look at the value of what you're doing, of whether it really um, is good for you is it holding you back in some way, whatever this, this thing is? Only you can know what I'm talking about. But I suspect there will be something that will just kind of represent an area of your life that you're going through the motions and it's time to let go. This is, the embers of the fire have virtually gone out. You can't stoke any more fuel onto it. You're on a losing wicket, as they say. And the ash just needs to be allowed to be blown away. Because once we 
get through that. Then it allows the new to come in because there is so much that wants to, to come into your life. So many, you know, the cosmos has such plans for all of us. And we often, and you often hear me say this, we get in our own way and stop the new things, the beneficial things, the good things coming in. So let's move on to your individual signs because I think what we need to do is look at the areas of your life where this full moon is occurring because this will give you a better picture of what it is, who it is, whatever it is that you really need to think very carefully of. And remember, Mercury in Virgo that goes retrograde in August, Mercury rules Virgo, is in opposition to transiting retrograde Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is urging Mercury to be very selective and careful of whatever words need to be used or words need to be written to achieve the best possible outcome without treading roughshod on the feelings of others or getting into anything accusatory, which is always easy to do when we react and not respond. Let's do your individual signs. They're all time stamped. So at this point, this chart will magically disappear. So let's have a look at Aries. Aries. It's in your 11th house. This is about something you have been dreaming about, working on, something that kind of elevates your sense of self and consciousness into these kind of higher, higher frequencies. But somehow it's like whatever the root is that you've been using, it's not quite working for you at the moment. And maybe you need to take a step back. Sometimes it can be things that are, um, what, what I'm thinking of is some of the sort of forms of healing like Reiki, acupuncture, acupressure, which are amazing systems, but we have to be in tune with them for them to work. So maybe you need to take a step backwards. Maybe you are a Reiki practitioner or an acupuncturist or an acupressurist. Maybe what you need to do is actually um, just take a step back, maybe take some time out and review, relook at what your motives are and your principles, because sometimes we get into such a routine doing these things and we lose the essence of what we're trying to um, pass on, to share with our client or another. So just give that a thought, Aries. Let's have a look at Taurus. Because Taurus, for you, this is about your career path. Now, as I often say, if you don't have a career, if you're retired or if you're just not working for whatever reason, this is about your soul path, your passion, whatever it is that really, really makes you want to get out of bed in the morning because you love doing whatever that is, that passion. I love doing my videos and my astrology. That makes me get out of bed. It makes me move my studio into another room and <laughs> nearly die of heat stroke in the process. 
So I'm not suggesting you do that because, you know, note to self, as a tourist person, I need to take a step back and actually, you know, take some of my own advice and, and, and rest. So what is it for Taurus? Well, I think the thing is, with it being in your 10th house of career and soul path, soul journey, passion, it's really about, are there methods or ways of doing things that need to change? You know, this is what I recognized as I battled with the heat. And also because I felt I needed to remove my studio from my living space, my private space, so that I separate my career, my, ha my hobby, my passion from my living space and my private life. And so I think in a way this has been part of what this full moon in Aquarius has been about for me. So I hope that gives you some kind of clue as to how it may be for you. So let's move on to Gemini. Gemini, it's in your ninth house. This is the house of higher education. It's the house of long distance travel. It can be the house of long distance travel of the mind. What perhaps have you been working on that no longer interests you in the same way? There may be something, Gemini, that you've been learning and really working hard on that somehow you feel you've got as far as it will go with it or as far as you can go with it. Maybe it's time to look at it in a fresh way. If this is about literal travel or travel of the soul, then you may need to find some differing ways to get in touch with that inner part of you. Because remember, Gemini, you get so caught up in your mind and your thinking. So we have to always think about that with you, Gemini. And your ruling sign Mercury going retrograde in August is going to give you just that. It's going to give you time to slow down and really just take some time out to think about the best moves forward for you. Let's move on to Cancer. Cancer, it's your eighth house. This is about your investments, what you invest in. Do you invest in yourself? Do you invest in your joint resources? Are you looking at some way to transform your whole financial situation? Well, most of us are doing that most of the time to one extent or another. So cancer, it may be that a source of income at this point dries up. That can be one, um, kind of result of this kind of energy, especially because you've got that Jupiter in Aquarius, sorry, Jupiter in Taurus, really um, tugging on this energy and expanding your, you know, what, what you would like to achieve, what you would really like to bring into your life. And maybe you've actually got to look at what you can manage at the time, at this time, and where you are overloading yourself with too many projects. And maybe you need to streamline what you're doing. Let's move on to Leo. So for you, Leo, it's of course in your opposite sign, Aquarius. You are the one fanning the flames of love. Are you love bombing someone and you can feel them slowly taking steps backwards to move away from you because it's too much? 
You know, I'm just thinking about that because it's fanning the flames of love. Leo, are you waxing lyrical and just so kind of, you know, um, so in love with love? Are you really looking at this person, perhaps, that you have your eyes fixed on as they fully are? Are you seeing them as they truly are? Or are you just seeing reflections of yourself? That could be one manifestation of this full moon energy because that person might just back off and back away completely. But in terms of relationship, if you're in a good solid relationship, I think it's about bringing in some necessary change to find some different ways to proceed forward, to communicate better. We've got that Virgo, that Mercury in Virgo in your, your second house that is kind of imploring you to look at your self-worth and the self-worth of your partner. And sometimes we, we forget these things and this is really about you addressing that, finding, breathe it. What you need to do is the fire has gone out Let's just say the fire is out. You've got to find the way to start a new fire with the person that really needs to be in your life. That's what I feel this full moon is about for you. Let's move on to Virgo. So Virgo. This full moon is in the part of your chart that is about your kind of working routine, how you spend your time every day, what you do, how you get through the day. What habits and routines do you need to change? Is it all a bit samey? Do you need to just brush it up a bit? You know, do you need to clean out the grate, clear up all those ashes of what's dead and gone and actually look at how you can light a new fire, bring in some new kind of goddess energy to, um, to serve not only yourself, but the world in general. Just look at your, your inner feelings at this time. Look at how it makes you feel. This can be um, a full moon for you that is really making you look at your inner self and how you feel emotionally and psychologically so that it can bring in elements of um, overwhelm emotional overwhelm. So you have to nip that in the bud and get back in balance. Remember you've got Mercury in your sign, your ruling planet, and it is gonna go retrograde in your sign. And you need to just do what Mercury is actually asking you to do, which is slow down a bit and just Take on the energy of these retrograde planets and look at this next part of the year up to the kind of autumn equinox and think about from this midpoint what you would like to achieve, what you would like to bring into your life. You know, sometimes when we break all these things down into manageable bits, manageable bites, it just makes life so much easier. When we see our whole life ahead and someone says, what are you doing in three years time or five years time? I don't know, could be dead, <laughs> hopefully not. But if this, if this heat continues, quite probably. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's always, I always think that, yes, it's good to have long-term plans, but you know, that could be too fixed. And sometimes we need a bit of your Virgo mutability. 
And we are moving into more mutable energy now as we get into this part of the year. And it's really more about um, looking at um, how we can really manage this energy in a different way. And I think sometimes if we are suffering from things like anxiety and the I ought to be doing and I should be doings, what about the just beings? And, you know, as is often said, we're human beings, not human doings. And in many ways, I think this full moon is about just being for you, Virgo. Libra, okay, Libra. So it's in the part of your chart that is about entertainment. It's about creativity. I think, Libra, you're actually feeling, um, I think you're feeling quite good at the moment, quite energized, while all around you are kind of fainting from the heat or freezing from the cold north of Paris and into the... <laughs> Into, into sort of the UK and the Nordic countries, the Scandi countries, where they're all shivering because in their summer, which is just freezing. You know, Libra, um, you know, wherever you are based in the world, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, which of course is now in the full throes of winter, um, you know, somehow you're not in a bad place. And I think... For you, this is about um, finding some interesting, creative pursuits to uh, changing the things that you normally do. I really feel you should be bringing in something new. Flip this energy. Maybe change what you've been doing for ages and really find a new way of entertaining yourself and maybe entertaining others. Let's move on to Scorpio. So what's going on at home, Scorpio? Because this is all about home and family. How are things at home? Are they, uh, have they been a little bit stressful? Because, you know, are family members being a little bit contrary or distant, it's, it's difficult to kind of pin them down to any kind of decisions or it feels as if there's a lot of quite challenging energy around you at the moment. I'm thinking of that Jupiter in Taurus that of course is in your seventh house of significant relationships, making a T-square to this full moon energy. So there seems to be a bit of a clash between work and home. Now, I'll, now I'll, I can't speak. <laughs> Only you know how you can resolve that. But I think one of the best things you could do with this energy, listen, Scorpio, it's August. It's kind of traditionally holiday month throughout the Northern Hemisphere. I don't know what you all do in the Southern Hemisphere. Let me know. I'd love to know because is it also a kind of wintertime break that you have in the Southern Hemisphere in August? Because there ain't much going on up here in the, in the, in the north of Northern Hemisphere, I can tell you. So Scorpio, maybe you need to take some time out and reconnect with family members. I think that's what this full moon is about for you. Let's move on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius. I would be very careful how you communicate over the next few 
kind of days and week or so because this energy is in your part of your chart to do with communication. And I just feel that you'll have to, you, you could come across a bit cold, a bit distant, a bit dismissive. And you know, Sagittarius, that's not really like you. You're actually pretty good at being um, quite warm and exciting. But there's something with this energy that is making you a little bit abrupt. It may be that you're tired, Sagittarius. Maybe you too just need a break because it's August. So why not do that, Sagittarius? Take some time out. I think it's so important at this time of year. Now let's move on to Capricorn. Capricorn, second house of finance. This is your material possessions. This is your self-worth. It's your relationship to your sort of material possessions. It can also be your relationship to others with regard to money. It's a full moon. I think it's about putting the brakes on. I think there's been a lot of activity for you in terms of uh, laying out finance or money in certain areas of your life. You know, with Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus, all right, it's your fifth house, but it is the house, it, it, it is the, the sign of finance. I think you might have been laying out on fun as well as on perhaps necessary stuff that you need to get or want to get. And I feel this full moon is asking you to put the brakes on and just um, distance yourself from one of these online shopping spree um, sites and stop adding to cart. If you are mindful of that, I think all shall be well. Let's move on to Aquarius, because of course this is in your first house. This is about you personally. This is about how you're feeling at the moment, Aquarius. So how are you feeling? Because, you know, a full moon is about closure, letting something go. Is there something or someone in your life that you need to bring to some conclusion, some kind of closure? Do you feel that you need to let go of certain ways of your behavior that just don't fit who you're becoming, who you're transforming into. You know, you've already had a taste of Pluto in your sign. By the end of 2024, when it moves fully into your sign, you are gonna experience the full power of Pluto's transforming energies. I think this is a time for you, this full moon, about taking a step back, reviewing what stays in your life and what goes. Who is on your team, Aquarius? Who is on your side? Who has your back? You know, it's always good every now and then for all of us to have a little think about that. Who answers the phone when we're really, really in a bad place? Who comes round if we really need them to come round? It's always a good thing to review. So Aquarius, just think about what needs to stay and what needs to go. What serves you best? 
high seas, my little oceans of emotions. <laughs> How are you doing, Pisces? How is it all unfolding down there in the depths of your eternal ocean of emotion? I hope you are keeping some sense of balance with Saturn in your sign, keeping you contained to a certain degree. Now this full moon is in your 12th house, your psyche, your soul, your inner self. And I think Pisces, you have been going through some enormous transformation, partly because Pluto is in Aquarius. So it's kind of moving into that part of your chart I mean, it's in Capricorn at the moment, but it's going to move fully into Aquarius. You've already had a taste of that. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring about that inner transformation, preparing you for in 20 years time when it moves into your sign. But um, I probably won't be around to look at that in 20 years time, but you never know. Um, however, this full moon for you is about revelations. It's about revelations about the self. You are going to have some of those amazing waking up aha moments. You are going to recognize what you need to let go of your life or let go of in your life, what you need to bring closure to, be it a relationship, a job, a project, a situation, a behavior, it's time to do it, Pisces. It's time to let go. Because you are not allowing the new to come in by holding on to the burning, dying embers of this fire that is no longer even flickering. It's just smoldering embers that are about to go out. Let it go. Pisces. You've been told. So on that note, <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I've had to go back and this, this, this video is in sections because first of all, I got interrupted when I was doing the overview, even though I was on do not disturb, something slipped through. Secondly, um, I think the heat has been affecting my thinking capacity. So even though I'm fairly cool in here, um, it's 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 still I'm I can feel my my thinking is not my cognitive skills are not at their best today. So please excuse me if I've made any complete bloomers. It's just um, it's just a mistake. But you know what? I'm human, and I'm not going to go back and get Jerry to edit every little bit. It's in three sections, this video, because that's how it's turned out. If you've reached this point, well done. You deserve a medal. You deserve the full moon in Aquarius to give you every blessing possible and remove from your life what you haven't been physically able to do so yourself, because it will. And on that note, thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. And, um, Remember to subscribe to my website. Um, everything in life is a work in progress. All my ideas and plans are a work in progress. They will be given birth to when it's the right time, as really yours. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.